I started collecting books like, like a mad person. <laughs> so all of my shelves are covered with photo books. So, Anastasia Semyonova, I'm so happy to have you here in Switzerland. And we are here in Vevey, this beautiful room at the Trois Couronnes. And you have your work shown at the festival, Image Vevey. You know, the, the festival is called Image. So, my first question would be, what was your introduction to images? Was it when you were a child with books? Was it later in your life? Or what? what how, do, how were you introduced to images, this world of images? Thank you, Nathalie. I'm thrilled to be here in this incredible setting, probably one of the most beautiful towns and just geographical regions I have ever seen in my life. What a mm -hmm. treat. And speaking of images, <laughs> I found myself at a breakfast today uh, trying to almost poke through the image of the mountain <laughs> that I was looking at. It's just, uh, it's hard to believe. The images that I grew up with, I was born in the USSR. Um, so uh, I grew up uh, surrounded by the Soviet era posters. Mm -hmm. This was my very early initiation. You might have heard that um, Mikhail Gorbachev just died. Mm -hmm. In fact, I come from the same town mm -hmm. uh, where he was from, the same region. Um, and then uh, my grandfather um, used to work at this factory. And I remember clearly the very saturated social real, socialist realism posters that were all around me. Colors, images. Um. Incredible colors, the deep reds that you might um, associate with the country at the time. The deep in reds. In the streets? Were they in the streets? They were in the streets, the mm -hmm. monumental ones, um, just enormous um, outdoor public art displays. Mm -hmm. And then some of them were part of buildings themselves, the mosaics. And then, of course, the large-scale posters all over. Mm -hmm. um, not unlike the displays we see now with actually a lot of festivals, right? But it's a very different kind of imagery at the time. So it was slightly um, propagandistic, yeah. right? It was all pro-family, uh, pro-hard work, but they had an agenda. That this is what is interesting. We are here in, a, in Switzerland in this uh, festival with these festival celebrates photography and photography is not hidden in galleries mm -hmm. but it's all over the street mm -hmm. monumental and mm -hmm. you just mentioned about uh, these uh, monumental posters mm -hmm. and we are not so used even in you know in this part of the world mm -hmm. to see art in the street and mm -hmm. art that is accessible to everyone this is not for just people who would you know buy a ticket go into a museum or just visit a, a gallery and that's also something unusual. Mm -hmm. So um, your work is outside, mm -hmm. outdoor. So what was your experience here in Vevey, seeing this art everywhere in the street and not, you know, just advertising like we are used to mm -hmm. see in the street? Or you mentioned about propaganda, mm -hmm. so politics uh, mm -hmm. is part also of mm -hmm. what we see in the streets. What is your experience with seeing art here and your work also yeah. experimenting your work outdoor. It's an absolute joy and in fact all the categories you mentioned I feel like they are at least at a glimpse that I got yesterday and today they are represented in the display. There is a political figure right. that is uh, you know manifested all throughout the streets I saw and this is where you question um, the purpose of the poster, it looks quite believable, but there are little giveaways. So all these different purposes that images might have. And uh, like you mentioned, the way they circulate is usually in a more intimate setting. So my presentation, Breakfasts with Books, with photo books specifically, uh, is made in a very intimate setting. It's really fun to see it on this outdoor display. And I encountered it by chance yesterday, walking by um, this, this museum. So it, it changes the context and it changes your perception, makes you question uh, not only the image, but your reality and how images live with us. You know, they're not separate from our lives. We are very much surrounded by them on this monumental outdoor, you know, 
three-dimensional scale, as well as on our screens with our constant browsing of things. Um, I am, I've just completed work on this large project called Image Cities. So the first thing that I saw when I arrived at the train station here was truth, I think, but I was wondering <laughs> if it's truth or if it's an actual rendering of the building. And this is something that I've been focusing on for the past year, so photographing large-scale images in the cities. Um, and that's why I was so drawn to Struth and I tried to frame it. It's just an impulse at this time. Yeah. So the work you have here is um, about history of photography mm -hmm. also. It seems that here you play with books, mm -hmm. photographing books mm -hmm. uh, and with these iconic images. Um, is it the way you learned about photography? Because what I know about you, you started photography a bit later in your life. It wasn't something you decided very young. Yes, absolutely. I came into photography from architecture and it was essentially self-taught in photography. Um, it wasn't very well represented in Moscow where I was growing up and where I went to my first college. Um, I can't even name a photography exhibition that I've seen mm -hmm. that impressed me at the time. There was a little bit of Rochenko, there was some historic imagery. So I discovered photography through books. Um, and, and now it's a kind of homage to these books or to absolutely, these, that's, yes. uh, what you wanted to do with this series? Yeah, it's an homage. It's an acknowledgement that um, no art, including photography, is ever made in vacuum. Nothing is just generated purely from within, right? We all have history and that history is accompanied by images all throughout our lives. So we've been exposed. There's no such thing as uninitiated production of art, right? And of course, this is a Warholian kind of concept. Um, it's all an exchange. Uh, so these are not meant to be seen as appropriation, but rather as an homage, like you mm -hmm. said. And this is me going through my newly acquired collection of photo books. I'm a first generation immigrant in the United States. And for a long time, I wasn't able to really settle down as I didn't know my status, whether it will come to fruition or not, that I could settle in the country. And so once my status as a citizen was approved, I started collecting book, like, books like, like a mad person. <laughs> so all of my shelves are uh, covered with photo books. And I would have a little breakfast with a book to get inspired about um, a day of photographing, for the day of photographing. And I would go out and photograph uh, in the style of Lee Friedlander or in the style of, you know, Tina Madati mm -hmm. uh, or Berenice Abbott. And then very much connected to that history. So influenced by what you saw in the exactly. morning. Exactly. Yeah, it was like exercises. Ex mm -hmm. Like a practice. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a very last question for you. So we are here in a beautiful hotel. They have a beautiful restaurant where you could invite someone for dinner. Mm -hmm. Who would you invite for dinner as a personality? That could be a philosopher, a musician, an artist, a photographer, someone living, someone dead, anybody. You, you can invite someone and have this kind of, you know, um, tete a tete dinner tonight. Who would that be? Well, immediately I know the answer. Once he <laughs> asked the question, it would be Walker Evans. Walker Evans. The great American photographer to whom I dedicated uh, my most recent book called Floridas. And the project was made very much with his practice in mind and his way of living and his way of looking. And all of the biographies have been with me on my many road trips for four years across the state of Florida, where he also photographed for four decades. And it's a very little known work. And he also painted there. So the book was just published. And I think it tells you something that I would have loved to have dinner with Evans. He wasn't an easy person. Many photographers, many artists yeah. are complicated. Uh, but I but think still, he, you would like to yeah, have a conversation with him. I have him. so many questions. I have so many questions and all I can do is, of course, imagine what the answers would have been or imagine the conversations. There were many con imaginary conversations you that had I've had with the <laughs> Exactly. And the breakfast is essentially that. It's the most intimate meal. And I would have loved to share a table with each one of those photographers and, and just casually chat with the view of the mountain, ideally. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Of course.